standing here today with Terry Wohlers, who is one of the preeminent authorities on 3D printing and rapid technologies in the world. And it's a really exciting time in uh, rapid and additive manufacturing. Uh, tell me about just how quickly, and the pace seems just blistering, um, how far is 3D printing reaching into a, our lives? Yeah, well, it's, it's hard to find an industry that's not being impacted by this, uh, this technology, uh, referred to as additive manufacturing and, and 3D printing, uh, terms that are being used interchangeably. Uh, whether it's healthcare, uh, industrial products, uh, medical uh, devices, aerospace, uh, food printing, clothing garments, the list goes on and on. And in the future, it's uh, what's exciting is, is what we know, but what's even more exciting is what we don't know. We're seeing a young generation of, of people get their hands on these tools and, and produce new, new ideas, uh, new, new types of uh, products that we've never seen before. So it's a very exciting time. It's really like a whole new way of thinking of making things and it's infusing the whole industry with a lot of uh, new energy. Talk to me about the actual machines and technologies that are on the market today now that can, that real manufacturers can look at purchasing um, to really make things today. Yeah, well, so we, we see these these uh, inexpensive machines that young people and really people of all ages that are using, but what excites us the most currently are the high-end applications and high-end machines. Uh, really being pioneered by aerospace and medical and dental companies where they're building parts that are flying on aircraft both commercial and military we're seeing uh, more than 90,000 hip implants acetabular cups uh, have been produced in titanium to date uh, every day of the week more than 20,000 dental copings that's the main body of a, a crown or bridge is being produced just on one company's uh, class of machine so uh, it's really beginning to gain traction for uh, real manufacturing versus prototyping which has been most of the history of this technology. Now there are a, a number of technical challenges to, that need to be overcome for 3D printing to really move into or additive manufacturing to really move into mainstream manufacturing. One is speed but there's also porosity issues and uh, what do you think are some of the key uh, technical challenges that need to be addressed in order to make this uh, you know, kind of a very extremely disruptive technology. Uh, the, the, main, the, the machines largely have not been produced for manufacturing. The, the, the uh, quality level that is required for manufacturing is, is probably an order of magnitude higher than for prototyping. So machine manufacturers are currently looking at putting, uh, adding process controls and closed feedback uh, uh, systems and really so they can uh, understand the behavior of the machines to ensure quality every time they, they build a part. Uh, so that uh, repeatability and reliability of machines, uh, companies that buy these very sometimes very expensive machines want them to run nonstop and some of the machines are not uh, you know, quite there just yet. So, so those are some of the things. And then also are the, uh, the ancillary equipment uh, devices that surround the equipment. So when you, suppose you buy a metal based system, that's just one piece and there's a lot of downstream, uh, for example, uh, stress relief, uh, heat treatment, uh, removal of the supports and anchors, surface treatment. Uh, there's a lot of steps and it requires a lot of uh, other machines and know-how. Machines such as CNC milling, for example, uh, to, to really produce good quality parts. So just one final question. Um, you see more of this industry than perhaps a lot of us do and I know you get to go behind the closed doors and see all sorts of things. Where do you think or where do you forecast that this industry is going to go? What do you see um, as the future for our additive manufacturing? Well, that's a good question. I, I, wish, uh, I, I wish I could answer that uh, fully, but I can say this, that uh, it's exciting to see what's here at this event. It's exciting to see all of these interesting applications and, and machines and so forth. But what's even more exciting is what we don't know. What's the next uh, iPhone or the next internet or the next semiconductor? I mean, no one was able to forecast playing a full-length movie on our phone because you couldn't get one of these big VHS tapes inside a phone. No one was able to do that. And I think when you put together 
the CAD tools and these 3D printers and a lot of bright minds, you know, step back because a lot of very exciting things will happen. And, and what's more is the level of, of investment that we're seeing, unprecedented. We're not talking about just Wall Street investors, we're talking about individuals, we're talking about educational research institutions, also um, governments around the world at all levels and some of the biggest corporations and brands in the world are looking at this and, and, and trying to understand where they might fit in. So it's a very exciting time. Well, thank you so much for coming out and talking to us today. I appreciate your time. Oh, you're welcome, Sarah.